Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to A Vlog Work Orange yet again. It's been a little while. I've just crawled off my deathbed in the last few days. That took me out of action for pretty much a month, almost. It started off as the flu, I believe, and then I had a couple of days where I was pretty much okay, and then seemed to have caught some other kind of bug, which took me out of action for another little while. So during that time, a whole lot of hobbying was not done, so this may be a little light on the vloggage this episode. But I did get to watch the entire Season 3 DVD of Diagnosis Murder while I was ill, which is nice. I feel like Season 3, that was when they really had the formula down. Before then it was a little bit too heavy on the silly musical instrument bits and tap dancing, I think. They really got it down in Season 3 and then it got better, in my opinion, from that point on. Some people think it got a little bit silly in the last couple of seasons when they started having crazy explosions all the time and FBI Task Force HQ in the Doctor's Lounge every episode, but I actually liked that. I thought it was funny. There were a couple of very tongue-in-cheek episodes as well. But that's enough about Diagnosis Murder. Maybe I'll do a video on that another time. But for now, miniatures and hobby-related stuff. So, developments while I was indisposed pictures of round bases in Warhammer. Oh dear. Or safety bases, as we like to call them. If that is an actual thing, then it seems like Warhammer would be changing the kind of game that it is. If it sticks to being the same game that I know and love, then it'll still be my number one priority game. Because at the moment, it's at the top, and it's not really being threatened. Even there's, so there's other games that I play more, Warhammer stays at the top. Fantasy, at least. So, if it stays the same game, if it's still recognisable as Warhammer, the same game that I'm playing now, then it'll, it'll probably stay there. If it turns into a different game, then really, while there's so much competition, I already play nine other game systems, then it's going to have to get to the back of the queue, to be honest, and prove itself. If it's not up to scratch, then it's not going to just get a pass for being Warhammer. If it's a totally different game, it is going to have to start at the bottom of the totem pole and work its way up past all these other games that I'm playing. If it's completely terrible and it's just a total disaster, then I know enough people who are happy to stick with 8th edition anyway, so it wouldn't be too much of an issue for me, and I'm also getting into Kings of War, which would potentially satisfy my need for massed battle, massed blocks of infantry kind of games. Possibly. I haven't done much at all hobby-wise. On the hobby table at the moment there's still a few things that were being worked on before I was ill. A few relics models, not finished yet, I'm hoping to get some of those done very soon. And all the video projects that I was hoping to have worked on during this last three weeks or so obviously haven't been worked on, so I've got some King's War stuff all over the place, needs videoing got the same two items over there at the airbrush station that have been there for a while, some drop zone commander stuff. And basically I just need to get everything back into gear, because it is only two months until Adepticon, so I definitely need to get some dwarves done, unless I'm just going to take what I have, which may not be the most competitive list at the moment. I've got a partially painted organ gun on the table here, so that's a priority at the moment, as well as some relic stuff and Kings of War. So, we shall see. But for the rest of this episode, because obviously I haven't done much or anything other than lie there watching Diagnosis Murder and Columbo and whatever else was on. Oh, I did watch a Quincy episode as well in the middle of the night. I haven't seen much of that lately. So for the rest of this episode, I'm just going to be looking at some games that I played it was pretty much before I was ill. I was starting to get the first few symptoms creeping in on this day. And then the night of these games, when I got home, is when I started actually feeling really, really ill. So there were a few games. It was at the Dan Bringers, Mr. Dan the 11th Legion. There was Spud and Pezapu and some other guys there. So there'll be some lovely still images of the games, and I'll talk you through them a little bit. So here's the whole crew that were there on the day. There's me posing nicely with my 
dice bag. Mr. Spud at the front there, of course. And Mr. Pezapoo with his lovely CWG t-shirt there. And his chum, Rich, in the background, giving the thumbs up. I got a lift there with those two. And then Dan and Aaron as well. So the six of us, three gaming tables. Perfect. So first of all, I played a game of Drop Zone Commander with Rich. It was my UCM against his PHR. And the scenario in question, there was intel in each of the buildings. When you try and collect it, it'll either be put into a pile of intel that you gather, or it'll explode, or it'll turn into an objective, which you then can get off the table to get extra points. And also, there's a focal point in the middle of the board, which we represented with Godzilla for this particular game. And whoever has the most units near that point at the end gets extra points as well. It's very complicated. As you can see, I've got the Albatross dropship here for the UCM. And I always find that it is the biggest draw of enemy fire of anything. It's not actually that potent, really, other than carrying a massive number of tanks. Once it's already dropped them off, it's quite slow, so there's not a whole lot it's going to do on its own. But people still shoot at it. I think they just see how big and impressive it is, and they just think that they're accomplishing something by destroying it. It's not that easy to drop either, so they put quite a lot of fire into it. You can see that I unloaded a lot of tanks right in the middle of the table, around the Godzilla area. And this was kind of the theme of the game. We unloaded all our fighty stuff in the middle, for the most part, and then we just flew around with our infantry, collecting all the intel, pretty much unopposed. Now here I dropped my Kodiak command vehicle out. I've made mistakes in previous games of keeping it in the dropship and flying it round, trying to use the command cards, getting it in range to use them, when really it's perfectly effective just dropping it off and using its bombardment, which is what I did, and it was very effective during this game. You can see here this huge mess at the end of the game that formed around Godzilla, because we were just trying to pile as many units as possible close to him so that they would count. And we actually had a tie in Intel. One of mine blew up, I think. And we had one objective each, which we managed to get off the table, I think. So we ended up with a draw with the amount of points from the various Intel. So it all came down to who had the most points of models near Godzilla. And I had the most points on the table, but some of my units were far enough away that they couldn't actually make it there by the end of the game. So he had, I think it was... 100 points more or something. It wasn't very much. But he ended up winning then, because he had more models near Godzilla. But it was a good game. Neither of us are absolute pros with the rules or anything. So we may have got one or two things wrong, but it is handy having Dan on the other side of the room, though, because he, I think he knows all the drop zone rules like the back of his hand. I didn't take a vast number of pictures. Any time I have a game like this where I just take a few pictures, it'll probably just be bundled into one of these vlogs rather than having its own separate video. This was the first game of Drop Zone Commander I'd had for quite a while, if I recall, and it was quite a good one. So it's encouraged me to start painting the other units that I already have, except when I sprayed them with my airbrush, I found out that the colour is different from the colour that I'd sprayed all my other units with. Even though it's got the same name and the same code on the bottle and everything, it's just a new batch, obviously and the shade is slightly off, so I'm going to have to mix it a little bit to get them right. We've got another Relics game here. I know it says 300 points on that piece of paper there, but I had multiple lists on the same sheet. And this was against the Orknar of Mr. Pezapoo, the delightfully painted burnt pizza style Orknar. I think he's borrowed a couple of models from Spud there. And this was Mr. Pezapoo's second game ever of Relics, second real game. The first time he'd encountered magic, because the first game he had was against Spud, so it was an Orknar civil war, really. Now, the way he's set up here, the one thing he'll probably learn when he's facing Tormentors is you don't want all your units so clumped together, because one shot on them can potentially do a lot of damage. Especially since I normally take two Tormentors. There's only one in this list, though. And you can see, I'm not holding back or anything. We, we didn't do any particular scenario, we're just going to kill each other. Because he's still learning the rules, no point complicating it. 
And as you can see, I killed one of his Rifen. I think I did that in two consecutive activations with the Tormentor, because I activated it right at the end of the turn when he'd advanced, so I was able to shoot and did some damage. And then I got the first activation in the next turn and was able to then finish it off. That's something you have to consider when you're positioning in this game, because it is possible that a unit will get two back-to-back -back activations like that, which can be very lethal. And I've got his dogs in combat there with my concursus. I think I got the charge on them. Looks like I killed one of his Angilds there on the left, presumably with the Tormentor. And the Dedicatus moved in and killed the other one. And my concursus just managed to chomp his dogs to bits. So it's not looking good for him at all, because all he's got left is that one Rifen in the middle. And he's got his commander at the back there. It's pretty much surrounded. It wasn't an ideal game for a beginner because I did get some very good dice rolling. Every time I rolled anything I was doing damage. So I just managed to kill all his stuff really early. And then you can see I'm really just crowding in on his unit there trying to kill it and chasing his commander around with my other units. And you can see we jumped from turn 3 to turn 5 there. So not that much was accomplished. I managed to kill it in the middle there with my sheer weight of numbers and then surrounded his commander who tried some evasive action to try and get out of my various lines of sight. But eventually she was caught and I managed to kill her in the last turn. So not ideal to completely crush a new player like that, but it couldn't really be helped with some of the epic dice rolling I was getting there. But it was fun. It was a fun day in general. There were various other games going on that I didn't get pictures of because they didn't involve me. I was considering doing some battle reports, but with three games going on at once it was quite noisy in there, so there would have been a lot of people talking in the background, so it would have been quite difficult. Also, I didn't want to make any games last too long, so we could get in as many as possible. But Dan's game room is very, very tasty indeed. Even if I was feeling a little bit under the weather. I had all the terrible symptoms hadn't set in at this stage completely. It was only when I got home and sat down at the computer and I just started to feel really, really, really ill. So I ended up having to go to bed very early. And then I didn't really get up much for the next week. Then I was only up for a day or two and then caught something else back in bed again for another week or two. So it wasn't a very good start to the year. Hopefully it'll pick up from here though. I was hoping to cover a bolt action game in this vlog as well, but that was postponed to this week. This week coming, hopefully on Thursday. So I'll report on that. I might get a full battle report out of that. I'm not sure whether I'll actually do video or just still images though. I'll have to see how much time there is and what my opponent thinks about that. Also, there's going to be a Hangout Relics game very soon with Miss Dreddy of Germany. We did one that wasn't broadcast as a test a few weeks ago and it didn't take that long at all. Relics seems to be the perfect game because it's quite a small playing area so you can see what's going on and there aren't a vast number of models to move around so it's not that much for one person to do it all. So hopefully that'll be fun for people to watch. Nice live game of Relics. Other than that, what else have I got lined up? It's quite a busy week actually, there's Chilling War Games episode this week. And also I'm going to have to be editing some videos in record time because I've got so many of them piled up. It's just a huge backlog because I was supposed to be doing them for the last three weeks while being ill. So I'll have to get on those and then painting. Yep, that's what my life's looking like for the next couple of months. Very, very busy indeed. So, I'll catch you again soon. Ta-ta!